Okay, YouTube, I got a special tour for you today. We're in my hometown, Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, and I'm gonna take you on a walking tour of these beautiful, magnificent, historic homes that are lining the streets of this town. If you ever wanna do an architecture tour, there's pretty much every style of 19th century homes in this town. Now, Yarmouth, Nova Scotia used to be the richest town here in North America. So it is amazing what they built with their money. And to think that we can't even rebuild them today with any uh, financial strains, I guess it would cost you. So this house here, we're gonna take you on a tour of these two and then we're gonna go up and down the streets. So stay tuned and watch the video, hit like and leave some comments on which house is your favorite. So on these videos, some of the houses I got pictures of during the winter when they were all dressed up for Christmas. So this one here, I know I got some photos on. This one here is for sale currently. And you can notice up on the top, the detail in that frame and those little portholes. All of these are built by uh, sea captains and financiers back in the 1870s mainly and 1860s, all the way up to, of course, the 1890s. This one is currently for sale. I think they're asking $7.99, so about $800,000. Quite a bit of money for the town. Definitely worth it, because to rebuild something like this would be in the millions. All the original work. I believe this house here was always a home. I don't think they ever really had it as a business. Definitely never had it as apartments. This is the next home. They're right beside each other on Parade Street. And it is just gorgeous. Look at that. Widows walk up there. And of course, on the top of that, you can see the mouth of the harbor. And that's how the wives knew if their husbands were on their way home or not. So this one is for sale as well. I think they're asking $369 ish. Really beautiful in the inside. Wow, and this one has portholes up above too. The story is, is that these homes were built for the same owner and one was a gift to his daughter and he lived in the other one. So absolutely gorgeous homes. So this is 57 Williams Street and it was built in 1877. And it has a beautiful Gothic revival house. And it was built uh, for, I think it was, uh, what was his name again? Eakins, I think was his last name. Robert Eakin, and he built two. One used to be right there and it burnt down about 25 years ago. And this one still stands today from 1877. An amazing architecture. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous house. And even the barn's the same way. So William Street, it's one of my favorite streets here. And as you can see, the trees are beautiful. You get this really old church. And then of course, I already showed you when the Gothic style of a house. So beautiful area to be in. And of course, you're just looking at down the road, it's gonna be Forest Street here. And the next one over is Parade. Okay, so we're at the corner of William and Forest, my favorite intersection. You get this beautiful blue house here. That's being renovated right now. You get two other really old homes. And you got something like a Georgian colonial style of a house. And yeah, just beautiful homes. Okay, I got a better view of it. And this house was built in 1897 uh, for John Larson. And it is a Victorian electric style. And of course, what I love about it is that balcony just above the uh, entrance door there. Absolutely gorgeous house. And I'm so glad someone's renovating this one. Got sold, uh, I believe maybe three years ago or so. This little pink house here is 17 Forest Street. And it was built in... 1855. So another beautiful house, really well kept on Forest Street. And here's uh, another one of the homes. And they have a beautiful garden, just 
wanted to show it to you. You know, back a hundred years ago, this town was full of gardeners from all over the world, and they came here and planted these amazing gardens for the upper class that was here in Yarmouth. And of course, Yarmouth was, at that time, one of the richest towns in North America. So there's more wealth here than any other town or city in North America, which is unbelievable. But then uh, once you know that, you can understand why these homes were built the way that they were, and they're absolutely stunning. So this is known as the BMO Bank Manager Residence on 22 Forest Street. And Forest Street, like I said before, one of the most beautiful streets that we have here in Yarmouth in my mind. Kind of give you a tour of it. Just gorgeous street. So this house here was built in 1903. 1903 and has a really nice veranda around it. Beautiful architecture. Really nice art, like uh, woodwork to it. And they've really kept this house up. Alright, so I'm just on Collins Street right now. This beautiful home is currently a B&B &B and I believe they have a uh, dinner available here too. A five-star styled restaurant with a gourmet chef. An absolutely stunning home. This one got fully renovated. I mean, look at the colors that they use. This is um, one of Michael's houses that he has bought over the years. They bought quite a few places here in the town. We'll put a plug in for them. Right here, 1887. It's a lodging and corporate. Stays. What an amazing place. I kind of feel like knocking on the door and seeing if they'll show me inside. <laughs> These two are also on Collin Street. This is what I was talking about. You can see the uh, Widow's Peak here was removed and it's all apartments now. But you can find this type of place all around the town as well. And to buy them and restore something like that would be absolutely amazing. So just a correction back there. Those last homes were on Willow Street. I'm on Collins Street now walking towards the museum. And this is another one that's owned by Michael, I believe. And it's apartments in there. But beautiful architecture up on the top. And we're going to go take a look at some of his other properties that he's been renovating up this road. All right, so here we are on Collins Street. This is another one I believe that Michael owns. And look at the colors that's on this house. I think they're just getting ready to paint it or fix it. But absolutely stunning. And the details. And then right across here, this home was owned by the man that owned the Fuller Brush Company out of Hartford, Connecticut. One of my favorite U.S. cities on the northern and eastern shore. And there's a full tour of that one on my four museums in one day tour. Includes that house. So definitely check out that video. But the white paint attracted mold. Yes. And so I decided to highlight all of the architectural elements of the house in um, browns and royal blues and burgundies and give it more of a grander appearance. Yes. So the tower, obviously, that blue is actually the banding color blue. And but with the brown, it makes it look really dark. And then, but the body of the house will stay blue and white. Okay. So it'll sit behind. So we have to do this bay top next. But if you look at that side bay, you can see how I did it. It's almost like a castle. Wow. So all the elements, the window and the stair tower, the bays, the tower on the house, the yeah. side porch are all done in these brown tones. And then the house, see the house then sits behind. And also, the brown doesn't let the mildew grow. Smart idea with the chestnut trees. So, this is Michael. He is the owner. Yeah, all right. Owner, worker, doer. I'm its slave. <laughs> Architect. Yep. Designer. And he did all these homes. Absolutely amazing. Over 20 plus years. years. Yeah. yeah. So. They look better than me most days. Wow. Enjoy your view. <laughs> This beautiful home used to be the town's library. 
and let's look at all the details inlaid with that brick absolutely astonishing now it is uh really well done with all the landscaping so it's going to be a little bit difficult to see the full house but what an amazing job this one was pretty much ready for the wrecking ball when it got salvaged by uh michael so they did an amazing job on this one absolutely stunning so we're still on collins street right beside the yarmouth museum definitely a great street to walk up you can see all the tree lining with the chestnut trees beautiful beautiful street and there's two more homes I'm just going to briefly talk about this one here i believe just got bought a few years back maybe two or three years ago you can comment about the paint color if you want it's not bad but uh kind of harder to see i guess all in all beautiful beautiful architecture definitely right here on a corner lot really nice Here's the other one I wanted to show you. So even up all these roads, you'll find homes like this. This used to be a family friend that owned this one. And there is one more for sale right down there. I think it's 250 roughly, quarter of a million. Beautiful home as well, especially the interior on that one was really nice. Here, this is 38 William. Looks like it might be an apartment at this time a lot of these homes now when the towns are kind of dying out got turned into apartments and then you have some of the other ones that people are fixing up and they're really worthwhile fixing because the craftsmanship of these homes is you know out of this world you know to rebuild a house like that you're talking well over half a million but to buy them in this town you can pick them up probably around 150 to 200 thousand dollars is not unreasonable my mind is the cheapest spot to buy a mansion in all of North America at this time. And we're just going up Forest Street now. So sorry about the shakiness of it. I just wanted to show you one of these other homes. And you have a widow's walk way up there on the top. There we go. Got a good view of it now. And that is for the ship captain's wife. When he's away at sea and she knows he's about to return, she'll go up the stairs there. And from the top roof, she can see into the harbor to see when his ship is sailing home and make sure that he got home safe. So still on Forest Street. I figured I'd just quickly get these houses. I love the color of this one. They did an amazing job on it. And if you do come up the street, make sure you make it all the way up the street because these ones near the top are amazing. Looks like someone's renovating this one over here, which used to be an apartment building. And take a look at these. Isn't that something? Even the gardens in the back. Wow. It does have a widow's window on the top. And it just keeps going. This town is so full of these homes. They're beautiful. This is 46 Albert Street for sale right now. There's a plug-in for them. <laughs> Good for them. We're on the corner of Cottage and Albert, right across from the St. Uh, Ambrose Church, which is a beautiful old church. Figured we'd take a little look at this one since it is for sale. And you know, see all the details. They did not spare any money when it came to building something around here. And beautiful, quiet little side street. A lot of these side streets are for the homes on the other side of Park Street, so you can have their parking there. But very quiet. See that they got pretty nice garden. The lot sizes in the central part of Yarmouth are pretty normal. They're not huge, but you got enough space to have a nice garden and a little bit of privacy. You can see some nice, beautiful roses there too. Looks like a nice house. I'll put in the comments what the uh, asking price is. Okay, so I figured I'd add this house in. You can see on the top of this one, it used to have a widow's peak to it, and then it got taken off probably later on. But this is probably about a 150-year-old home. And Yarmouth is one of those towns that if you have some ambition, 
and you want to fix up 150 plus year home, this is the place to come. You can buy this kind of a house probably for around $60,000 and uh, put your sweat and blood and tears into it. And I'll show you our sunset here. It's probably not going to come out perfect on the camera, but Yarmouth is a very beautiful town in the summer. Really encourage everyone to come here. And if you're into old homes and architecture, this is the place to be because we have a little bit of everything in this town to look at and see. So now we are on Vancouver Street, right off of Main Street heading towards the hospital. We're going to work our way down it, then head over to Brunswick Street and Elm Street. And this house, probably one of my favorite, John Miller's house currently. Of course, this one was built you know, 200 years ago as well, but definitely worth stopping by and taking a look. And if you do come to the Yarmouth area, you'll notice there's a lot of lakes. So this one is actually a lakefront mansion and uh, just unbelievable. Unbelievable how much land all these lots have, and especially going right down to the lakes. And this whole area is dotted with lakes everywhere. So the next house I'm going to show you, probably just going to get a picture of it because it's kind of in a bad spot for me to be parking is uh was bought by Gil Dares and his family and totally renovated and the house was literally about to fall down so I'll show you that house in a picture if I can snap it from the car safely enough and it's amazing what you can do with a little bit of time and then of course they sold it to the current family that's living in it now but these homes in this town are just unreal you can kind of see the lake in the back there a little bit. So just at the corner of Brunswick and Huntington Street, and we have a pair of two houses back here. There we go. We can see them. They're identical. One's yellow, one's white. One is for sale. It is a senior's home right now. Currently, I think it's listed for 260, 280, somewhere in that ballpark anyways. But really nice original interior in that one. I was in it as a kid. So this is the street that I actually grew up on, surprisingly enough. And I will show you my old house, and it is on the corner of Huntington and Brunswick Street. And then we'll go down Elm Street and see a few houses there. So let me show you this one. So this is 106 Brunswick Street. All these beautiful trees I used to climb as a kid. Nice canopy up there. And here we go. We should be able to start seeing the house now. This house, get a good pick. There we go. It was built in 1872 by Captain Borman Perkham. And the original house that used to sit here was actually shipped down Brunswick Street towards Stars Road. And that's why the barn is a different style than the house. This here is a Queen Anne Victorian house. And the barn, I can't remember what it is, but, anyways, you can tell by the styling of the roof line totally different. So the barn is actually much older than the house by 20 years and then they built this house where another house used to stand and it's still actually built up the road and it would have been 1860s when they moved it by ox up the road. But this is a beautiful 22 room house that we called home <laughs> for pretty much my whole life all the way up to about 16, 17 when I moved out and join the army. So we did have a different colors, not a huge fan of the blue, but I guess the buyers are. Here's the rock wall around it. There's my mom eyeing up her old house. You can see even up the top there. I'm horrified of heights, so no, I never did go up there. The attic I always found creepy, but that third floor is where we lived and then we rented out these rooms as a B and b so kind of like a mini hotel I guess you can say or call it so mom what do you think of your old house it looks good looks good it still still does there you have it this is 106 beautiful home the whole entire interior is all original on it it's amazingly done inside the woodwork alone basically you can't even replace it anymore so 
So this beautiful house is on the corner of Brunswick Street and Elm Street, so right beside 109 Brunswick Street. Not sure if I said 106. Sometimes my memory goes a little bit after 15 years. But uh, this one here on Elm Street, it is for sale as well. Uh, I believe it to be for sale around um, high four, somewhere around there. Pretty nice house, totally restored on the inside. They did a very good job on it and definitely somewhere right around that time frame. In fact, this little pocket has all kinds of homes. As you can see kind of down the street, there's another three down that way. And then if you go up Elm Street heading towards Pleasant Street, there are another two beautiful homes on the corner that way as well. So all these streets in Yarmouth, when you're walking on them, they're absolutely beautiful. You'll see little pockets of, you know, 18th, well, 19th century homes, you know, mixed in with even newer homes beside it. A lot of them sadly did get converted to apartments uh, as the economy of Yarmouth shifted in the uh, 20th century. But uh, all in all, a lot of these homes are very nice and affordable to be able to get into and restore. You know, obviously restoring costs are way through the roof, but if you do the work yourself, you can get a good deal. Uh, like my mother who bought uh, 109 Brunswick Street there, did it herself and uh, ended up being a beautiful home. So that's the end of the tour. I think we got most of the homes. This whole entire town is completely covered. Mom, you wanna say anything? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> No, there you go. But she did restore her own house and turn it into a B&B &B here in Yarmouth in 1990. Correct? I think so. 1990 when you did that. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. ran it for years. So yes. definitely check out the town because this town was the wealthiest town in North America back then in 1880s. It seemed like there was more, I guess, what would be called today millionaires in this town than any other town in North America at that point. So the homes that they built here were absolutely fantastic. And I mean, they even had gardeners from Asia, you know, move here just to take care of the lawns. Like, it was unbelievable. If we could go back in time to 1880 and see these homes in their prime, I mean, it would be astonishing you know much nicer than the million dollar homes they're building these days so that's the tour hope you enjoyed it hit like leave a comment if i didn't put a house on here that you wanted to see or if you just want to recommend a house leave it on the bottom for others to see all right so this is the corner of cliff and park street and of course right over here we've got forest street running up here and there's a few homes on up here especially this one i must say this house i would literally buy it the second it came up for sale i would put an offer for sure wouldn't even care what condition the inside's in i would fix it all up anyways and make this my home for sure so anyways thank you for watching the video i'm gonna leave you on this beautiful home here and up top right here will be the two house tours that are available uh one with michael Michael's house and the other one with the Fuller Brush house. So enjoy those videos, leave some likes and comments. Thanks for watching.